Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Pal. Let's take a look at an example of applying a procedure called Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. We're going to take three vectors which form a basis for a subspace of R4, and we're going to output a new basis for that same subspace where each um, pair of uh, vectors in that basis um, or orthogonal to each other. Currently at the moment, if we take a dot product between any two of these, um, we won't get zero, which means they're not orthogonal. Okay, so proceeding, um, this is what we have. Um, our, when we form a new basis, V1 is going to be in the first place. So we're just going to use v1 in the first place here. And we're going to let w1 represent the first vector here. All right. w2 will represent the second guy. w3, let's let that represent the third guy right here. All right. So as, so as we go along, notice that this step depends on what, what's previous, w1. This step depends on what's previous W2. I've re represented um, the list in two um, two different ways, but it's really the same. I just kind of showing that we can kind of organize and put some things together to look like this. But in this form, we kind of can think what's happening. This is a unit vector in the direction of W1. W1 is the same as V1 in the direction of V1. Um, and this is the projection length of V2 onto W1. Okay, so it's like, so quite literally what we're doing is we're um, taking, uh, we're rescaling a, a vector in the direction of W1 to the same as the projection length, um, like this, and then we're subtracting, and the subtraction right here is a vector which should be orthogonal to, um, to W1 itself right there. And this is kind of the basic idea that we can use um, repeatedly um, uh, in order to get what we want. So V1, and then we have V2 would be represented this way. And V3, you make sure that it's orthogonal to, um, to both W1 and W2. Okay, so let's, let's proceed and see what we can do. So in our new basis, we have negative 1, 0, 0, 0. The next one that we have is, um, OK, so, so the next guy that we have would be obtained from this. So what are we going to do? We're going to take uh, v2, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and we're going to subtract from it something. So w1 that's been rescaled. W1 is just V1. How are we going to rescale it? Let's see. We'll take a dot product between these two guys. So W1 is just V1 here. So take a dot product between these two, and we just get 1. Notice 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. So we just get 1. Um, and then the length of this vector is just 1. So this is just 1. So basically what we're doing, this is kind of a nice example, we're just simply taking this vector and we're just subtracting off this one. So subtracting off this one is like adding a one to that entry. And um, so we end up getting zero, zero, negative one, zero. Okay. All right. And then um, over here, um, as we continue, let's see. So what are we going to do for V3? So for V3, um, we take, let's see, for, for W3, we have like 1, 0, 0, 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to reuse this and this in the list. So we find the projection of this onto this. The projection length, take a dot product, we get a negative 1. Okay, so it's going to be in the opposite direction, the vector, but that's okay. So we get a negative one, but then we also, of course, divide by the length of this guy, which is one. So it's just negative one. Um, so we're going to be subtract off uh, negative one times um, uh, times the vector v one itself. 
which is negative one, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so three negatives, so that would, okay. So that would again be a negative, so one minus that, okay. All right, so currently at the moment we have um, from that z calculation, zero, 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 one, but we're not quite done because we also have to subtract off this. Okay, so we need to project V3 itself, which is um, this vector onto W2, which is right here. Notice that projection is simply zero because this dot product is zero. Hey, that was pretty nice. So we end up just getting zero comma zero comma zero one. And, and that would be the, um, and so um, this is the beginning basis and this is the ending basis using Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization, just kind of using this basic idea of projecting um, projection length and then um, and then mul and then multiplying by that vector. Of course, we threw in the square right here. Um, we didn't actually use this ever really too much in this particular example because this length was always one. But nonetheless, this is the basic procedure for for how it's for how it's done. In the next bit, in another video, um, we're going to show. Uh, this process using um, using matri matrices, and we can do a comparison between the two. Thanks for watching.